went blind. I went blind. Episode 18 with the one and only Donk 2. Now, this episode is so jam packed with action, I had to split it in two parts. I did an 11 hour session. Yeah, 11 hours straight. And I was filming every second hand. Just to get to where I am right now, I've done about six full days of editing. Just going over the footage, just seeing what's going to make the cut, what's not, and uh, coming together with a game plan to present it to you guys. So, I really hope you enjoy this, and when you're done, subscribe and like so you can get full exclusive access to part two of episode 18. Let's go! That's Poker so vlog good. 19. Woo Kicking it off with an ace three suited. You know, these are the hands you hate to love because they're so easy to overplay, yet when they hit, they can make you a crap load of money. And this hand, we're going forward to the flop for $10, and we're in the second best position, the cutoff. The flop is ace 4 8 all rainbow. We have runner runner straight draw and backdoor flush draw to the nut. I check it around looking to improve at a cheap cost. There's a bet of $20 with a smooth call and that gives me the perfect odds here to continue. And so I do. I'm not looking to get fancies. I just sat down with a short stack of $150. No check raising. I don't have a good enough kicker for that. But we do hit two pair giving us most likely the best hand. Now don't you don't go, go there checking it over to the button expecting him to bet there don't to don't be a fool son Check. Check. Not what I wanted kaboom And another eight pairs the board under the gun bets out 50 and this is very strong He's betting into two players who've made it to the river So we're gonna see what the other guy in the hand wants to do and then make our decision our ace three got counterfeited, so now anything ace five and up actually beats us. Our only chance of winning this hand is to represent something like king eight of diamonds. But hold that thought. Player two just raised to 150. I wonder what he has. Why don't we let this hand play out and see what happens? But first, one of the other players reluctantly shows his hands, and then he asks me, did you have me beat? To which I reply, Oh yeah. Heads up. I just had to hear the natural sound of chips flying in the pot, but it's time to show the cards, boys. We have King 8 for trips with the best kicker, and someone not so happy with 8 9. Ouchie. Ace 8 suited. In the last video, I created a side pot pre flop with this hand, and I actually made $19 when it most likely looked to everyone else like I lost about 50. So, I'm going to do this again and try to get fancy with a play here. The guy wants to bet $30 and I consider folding, but I'm like, nah, I got the nut spade redraw. So we're going to go to a turn. And with that being said, we're hoping that it's a spade or an ace or something that could give me a straight draw. Boom, the king of spades. And what do you think I'm going to do? I jam, of course. Now I got the nut flush draw and with an overcard to the king, I should be in pretty good position to look very strong here. And, you know, I got outs in case he has something like, let's say, King Jack. The hero makes the quick call, and that's okay. We've only invested 150 when we could have potentially bought in for 400. So let's go to the river and hope it helps us. Yes, hi. Here you go. Take everything I got. You earned it. I'm going to try and buy in with $200 this time. I'm hoping that the higher risk will come with a higher reward. Jack eight suited. Another one of these hands where you just don't want to make top pair. You're always going to have kicker problems and you don't want to be kicking yourself in the butt at the end of the hand when you're supposed to be making a five card hand with this. You want to make flushes, houses, and straights, you know, hands that can crack aces, for example. And you know, we're going through it to the flop and we get top pair. I check it, it checks again, and the third player decides to bet $20. I think it's a fair price to stick around. I'm really looking to hit an 8, a jack, um, you know, trying to improve. Another caller gets in the pot, and now we're playing for about 100 bucks. We're upping the ante and the intensity here. Kaboom! We turn a 6, giving 
anybody with a four, an open-ended straight draw. So it's going to be harder to get them off their hand now. And with this small bet of $30, I'm thinking that his range does consist of a 4x holding. So that's what I'm putting him on for right now. I hope he has 4-6 of diamonds, so if we go to a river showdown, my hand's most likely going to be good. And that theory is debunked. The 6 of diamonds comes on the river, and I think it's a perfect card to bluff with. Because it fills up houses, and it completes a flush. So let's stick a bet out there, and see if we can get this player to fold. He's tanking for a quick sec here. Tanking, tanking. What's he going to do? Oh, no, please don't do it. And he does it. I show Jack with kicker problems, and he shows me a flush. So there you go. The donk bet did not work. Donk 2 goes home with his tail between his legs. And, like, somebody who actually is somebody, like, please review this for me and let me know what happened here. Just give an honest, logical, unbiased opinion anyways i got a brie buy for 400 this time upping the ante again hoping for a bigger reward as i'm taking a bigger risk yeah i don't know about that sound sounds like we got somebody practicing kung fu at the tables trying to karate chop their opponent's stack into half i don't know but we got queen jack suited premium hand let's go so i'm in position i pump it up to 20 dollars. we got one caller the flop comes down and i hit mid pair jack with a queen kicker our opponent decides to check to us, and we're going to continue with a passive-aggressive bet of $15, a pot builder. He decides that he wants to tag along, and on the turn, we're going to hit a 10 to pick up an open-ended straight draw, right? He checks to us, and we decide to up the ante, cranking out a $50 bet. This is going to give him a decision. We don't know what he has, but, you know, he's going to have to reconsider what we're working with, right? This is a healthy bet and it's good enough to take down the pot. I'm just breezing through this hand because both bets were super standard in position on a rainbow board. Finally took down the first pot of the night and you know what this means. We gotta keep the steam chain rolling, keep the good vibes going, and let out that one, two, three, dunk, dunk two, signing in online. I had to for this one. This is the shortest play of the night, but easily the most controversial. So in this hand here, under the gun opens up to $20. An early position calls, and I'm sitting in big blind wondering what I should do. I have ace-king offsuit. So what I did was I just called. The flop comes down, jack, king, eight, two diamonds. I got top pair, top kicker. I decide to check it over to the pre-flop razor, okay? He bets 20 and early position calls. At this point, I'm like, all right, let me try and squeeze them out. I raise it up to $85. It doesn't do the trick. The under the gun preflop razor decides to push me all in for effectively $450 or so. And I decide that he has one of two hands. Just from experience playing, I kind of know what's going on here. He either has queen ten of diamonds or nine ten of diamonds, the open enders with the straight flush draws, right? And uh, I'm just thinking, like, am I more than 50% favorite here? And I couldn't just come up with the math off my head. So given the run out of how the day went, I bought in for 150 to start the day. Then I went up to 200 so I'm in for 350 Now I've got four, 400 on the table, but I've made about $50. So really, I'm stuck 300 And do I want to go on a coin flip against such a good hand? I decided to be passive and let this play go. He took down the pot, and he was very, very surprised when I showed him my hand. Uh, respectfully, he showed me his hand so that I was uh, correct on my assumptions. Let me just get one thing clear. We're not even going to factor in sets to this hand, okay? A set would have bet out about 65% pot into two other players, at the very minimum, to protect his hand on such a draw-heavy board. So factor those completely out, even though that there's still a possibility of sets and two pairs. Let's just break it down a little bit for you guys here so you can see exactly the mathematics of it all. So, long story short, I got three bet re-raised all in on the flop. I didn't know how much equity I had in the hand and even heads up, I didn't know if it would be a good choice. I ended up making the fold because there was a player behind and I wasn't even confident in my diamond redraw. So let's go check what uh, GTO Solver would have said and how we should have played it from 
pre-flop. So as you can see here, it's really simple. From an early position open, I'm always re-raising ace-king offsuit in the small blind. So I should have pumped it up to about $85 pre-flop. And at that point, I would have been so committed to the hand um, that I could not have folded. So things would have definitely been different. But I played a passive route and I got bullied out of it. So I want to know what you guys think. Like, is it always a fold there the way that I played it? Or is it always a call? Because I'm getting mixed reviews from professionals. So I don't know. Let's see. Let me know how you guys would have played it. <laughs> thank you. Thank That's you. Crazy. Thank you. Thank you. Woo! 710 suited that's that in a grand you only difference is we're gonna play it in good old-fashioned donk 2 style so buckle your seat belts and get ready for a bumpy ride we're raising it up to 15 but we're out of position here the flop comes down five six four with two spades we have a flush draw and an open end straight draw kaboom we hit the turn and it's a spade a king of spades i go for a fake out check and he instantly bets i know he's strong i just know he's strong I want to be absolutely sure though, so I'm going to check raise him up to $60 from his $30 bet and see how he wants to play it on the river. This check raise doesn't always mean that I have the nuts. It could mean that I picked up equity and have something like six king or king with a jack and higher kicker uh, for a spade. So he does make the call here and I do something a bit unorthodox. Remember, donk two, not in a grand you. I decide to go for a check on the river when it's a blank here. I don't want to barrel him off a hand, and as suspected, he actually goes for the jam. Call. Mm -hmm. Flush. Flush? Yeah. Flush. No. Hey, uh, for sure, guys. He, you get, oh, no. I was like, yeah. he gets a discount, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, I do. Nice. That's not his day. All right, break time's over. Back to business. We're looking down at queen six spades, and we're running hot, so why the F not? Seven dollars. Seven race. Hold on now. This guy obviously watches the vlogs, but one thing you don't do is try to pull a donk two on donk two himself. That could get you in a whole lot of trouble, my man. The dealer just said we're going four ways to the flop, and what do you know? It's all spades. You <laughs> So what do I do? I bet it out. You notice we haven't even cut the feed yet, so nobody's gonna put me on spades. We get a jam for like 35 bucks, and we have an insta call. Is it just me and you? Yeah. I have a flush. Back to back flush. Oh wow, man, you're good. Well, you wanna call? Yeah, I did you're call. Good. I thought I did, yeah. sorry. Nice hand, nice hand. Yeah. I got flush, dude. No way. Yeah. What? 5-7? Yeah. Hey, good luck, guys. Take care, buddy. That's super sick. I'll tell you. 1 in 288 chance of that happening, man. I haven't even cut the feed yet, and we get King 8 suited. Yeah, this is the hand from the intro where I had the cards blanked out, and you guys get to tune in for a big boy play. The flop is all spades, and our opponent bets out for $25. I massively overbet to look super bluffy. 175. 175. The bigger his was on the flop, the stronger I think he is. And he bet pretty much pot. So I went the super bluffy re raise. And we're going to go to a turn here, but in donk two fashion. I'm all in blind. All in blind. <laughs> I got not flush. Yeah, the other flush, baby. And without saying too much, I flushed all his dreams down the toilet. Better luck next time, brother. That's how it goes sometimes, eh? <laughs> oh man, what do you have? What do you mean, probably nothing? Ooh. It's a don't do special, man. Holy smoke. <laughs> Dude, I flopped so many flushes in the last hour, it's insane. <laughs> Took him out. N next hand, very next hand, flush versus flush. That's insane, dude. Yeah, man. Poker's not hard. Poker's not hard. Oh, shit. Yeah, good feeling he had a strong hand, though, so 
I think I got max value, right? Oh, you're studying payoff. Ooh, baby. It's <laughs> insane. But now we know you're going to play any suited cards. Pretty much, eh? Seven deuce of spades. Not quite, brother, but for you, I'll play Seven Deuce of Hearts. This here is entertainment for the people, baby. And you know what? I don't care because I feel I'm good enough to play it. Out of position, in position. Let's go, man. Let's go. So that's it for part one of episode 18. And like I said earlier, subscribe and like so you can get access to part two because the educational value and the entertainment value combined is absolutely phenomenal. I'll see you guys there, part two. Cheers.